we <laughs> we didn't have enough money to do RVs. You know? There you go. Hey, Snake, how's it going? How did the scans go? Good. Good. No more cancer that so far. Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah. We, were, we were thinking about you. We're just talking. David and I are talking about RVs. RV. <laughs> yeah. I don't have one. Yeah. yeah I, I can barely afford to have a house, much less an RV. I'm with you. Oh, hey, look who it is. Look who's coming. At least the hey. top half. Oh, my. You can only see half your face, Jeff. Was, was Jeff here yeah. last week? Joan says she can't come today. I'm reading out. He'll be back, I hope. Yeah. But anyway, oh. uh, when I see this uh, plumber show back up, I'm gonna have to sign off. But uh, yeah, I, I was intending to look at last week's, but I never got a chance to. Like I'm so busy. But uh, hey, you know, it's it's none of us have anything to do, and we're still busy. <laughs> oh, yeah, we got time to work. Yeah, that's about it. Um, Joel sent me a, a, a note about he wants to he's talking now he says what do you think about having the um, the reunion in October and I, I said well I'll tell everybody about it and see what they say uh -huh. where any idea uh, I you know I should have asked that question but I imagine up north last time you talked about um, um, not Princeton Yale he could have it at Yale if they weren't in school or if they were in school, or I don't know. But I don't know if everybody's going to be ready to travel in October. I don't know if I'm going to be alive in October. <laughs> yeah. that, that's soon Snake. for me, that's for sure. Snake, you'll be here. I, hope I mean, so. Jeff. Here, Jeff, I'm here. Telling me about his demise, and he keeps showing up. So. No, I <laughs> haven't died yet. <laughs> Give me a day or two. Give me a day or two. Well, that came up because Joel, called, Joel wrote me and asked what I thought about having the um, reunion in October. And Snake said he didn't know if he'd be alive in October. Me neither. Well, that's what I just said. <laughs> tell, tell Joel that we want oxygen, nurses, and a lot of morphine. <laughs> and beer. So, and so you think he's hey, going to provide you, this? <laughs> how, how do you feel? Snake, yeah. how do you feel? Fine, I got a good scan. Oh, terrific. Got a good scan. I kept thinking, you know, I hadn't, hadn't, hadn't gotten the results for a, like a week, and I thought, man, no news is good news. So <laughs> they finally That's came, it. Finally came midweek, and everything's fine. Hey, if they don't call and say, I want you back in the hospital, now, then it's good. Yeah. Oh, there Life's I am. Simple pleasures, huh? Too bad. Hey, simple pleasures is right. Glad yeah, I, glad I don't think I'm going to be traveling fall. by the fall. Really? Unless I get a, a real burst of uh, confidence and whatnot. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm who knows? Up. Who knows? Yeah. I'll yeah. try to make it any of a reunion. Another reunion? Tom was just talking. Well, that's about what he—that's what Joel was asking. He wants to do one in October. And I said, "Well, Where, I up in, well, I imagine up uh, up by Yale, but by Yale, good guys, good in Yale." I'm re I'm ready. I'll be there. I'm ready. Not. Who knows? I got plenty of miles, so I'm a long ways away from Yale. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm just. I was just reading all of those emails about us. Doing the striptease, 
Did you read those? Yeah. I, I glanced at them, yeah. I will take full blame for that. <laughs> New York, New York, about 1965, 66. Ronnie Bizel started to play the tune, and I was so bored. Hey, everybody. Hey, hey Billy. Hi. Hey, Bill. We're talking about strip teases. Jeff's, uh -huh. taking, Jeff's taking credit for it. Well, <laughs> if, any, if anyone's before 1965, they can take credit. Nope. Mm. I went after 70, but. I was in this yeah. mid to late 60s. Yeah. When I joined, it was still called the Red Garter. That's how long I've been working on. Mm -hmm. That can't be right. Hold it. I graduated <laughs> in 65, and it, I had already been working at the stash. But was it a red garter when Joel had it? When Joel first started it, it was 56 years ago. <laughs> 56 years ago. Been around a long time, Jeff. Yeah. God, talk about long in the tooth. It had to be more than 56 years ago, right? Because uh, they had the 50th reunion in uh, 2012. None of us could ever agree. I started between 64 and 65. Okay. I can't remember exactly when. Yeah. But it was Ronnie Bizell, myself, Jim Burton. And Joe Terra. No, when I first started, it was Grove Thomas playing the washboard. He used knives. We kept oh, praying. We saw, I saw those pictures, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's the that's the picture that's on the postcard too. I think he has one of his knives in, in yeah. midair. Yeah. Can you believe we got paid for doing that? Uh -huh. Yeah. So, so Joel had a franchise from the Garter and then he was able Joel, to buy it out? It was Jack Dupin who owned the name, the Red Garter. And Josh was franchising. And he started, Gim is probably the oldest, the longest tenure, because he started in Boston, and it was Boston, Cape Cod, and then New York. And while we were in New York, Joel finally bought out Dupin so he could get out of his franchising contract. And then there was a, uh, there was a big contest for what the name was going to be. And it was it ended up your father's mustache. So there were <clears throat> there were three garters that then became the mustache? Yes. Yeah. Uh well two and a garter eight. in San Francisco. I don't think what? There was a garter in San Francisco. I went to the garter in San Francisco. That was the one that was the one where Joel started with Jack Dupin and he bought out, Joel was, I, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was in New York because when I started at the mustache, they had the red garter on the stained glass windows. Hmm. And that was, hell, I don't know, 64. Yeah. That's a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, Billy's been married 49 years. He's an old man. Yeah. 
Yeah, we um we had a they, we had a red garter in New Orleans open at the same time as your father's mustache. Hey, hey, Chris. Hey, Chris. Christian, how you doing? Oh, Chris. Hello, Chris. Hello, guys. Uh, These are all the handsome guys. This I have. <laughs> That's my. Hey, if she gives me the wrong pill, I fold up. <laughs> She comes two days a week, and her sister comes two days a week. Then I have the nurse who comes whenever we get upset. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> it's just it's the hospice. I think it's great. Throw this on here. Let's see. The hospice care is fabulous. They just don't have enough medicines for me. <laughs> I don't know what you're on. How much would be enough for you? But I'm on anything. I'm on anything I can take and still stand. That's it. Hey, Chris. What's my goal? My goal is to go out quietly, unexpectedly. <laughs> These are the words I'm writing down for my obit. Something like, don't worry if you can't reach Jeff Oldswine by email or phone. He's dead. <laughs> that's, that's, I'm going to start something like that. Mm. Oh, look at this. I'm an architect, you figure. Just I can find the pictures, picture. David. What? David Krippner, I just sent you pictures. Oh, good. Thank you. You send me pictures? No, not you, Jeff. Um, no, no. Hey, Christian. Oh, um, Tom and I were talking earlier. Yeah. So Joel, wrote, Joel have... wrote me about the. Um, he wants to do the in October. He wants to do the reunion, and he asked me what you know what I thought or what the people thought. I said, "Well, I'll bring it up, and you can watch the video." Jeff's all in. Snake doesn't oh, yeah, think I'm he's going to be alive. Right. Right. Snake. Yeah. Are we all in? Yeah. Let's... Right. Right. Well, where, where was he planning to do it? In the funeral. In NASA, I imagine probably at Yale because he's up there. No, they, we have a very nice funeral home. Know, how do I know? We got two or three of us on the. Well, Jeff, you know. The... <laughs> Jeff, if you die, maybe we could all come to the funeral and have a reunion at the same time. That's it. Yeah, what's wrong with that? They have it's very nice cool. food. They have very nice food, and it's non-denominational. Yeah. <laughs> ask, ask me if I care, Tom. Do you care? <laughs> no. Well, where are you right now, Jeff? I can't remember. You're in Florida somewhere? No. Hell no. I'm in <laughs> Wisconsin. Wisconsin. OK. Hey, yes. No, no, no. I figured I got here. Jesus. I got here in 72 with my late wife. We we're going to stay for two years. You know, it was a joke because I had never been to the Midwest. And that was 1972. Oh, you know, and it's, I had offers to teach other places, but I had no desire. The Midwest, for those of you who haven't lived here, the people are pretty normal. <laughs> yeah, that's where you I know. grew up in the Midwest. So, yeah, well, then you know. I mean, I'm I. From, I'm from Iowa. Listen, when I worked at the Mustache in New York, I was going to Cooper Union to get my first degree. Then I went to <laughs> Oregon. To get another degree. Then I went down to Arizona to teach. Then I went to Scotland to get another degree. And then I came here as a joke because I've never been to the Midwest. And I, the idea, sorry, the idea of Florida didn't appeal to me or California. I'm Minnesota, sorry. are you up close to the, to the lakes? He's Wisconsin. About, I mean, Wisconsin. About, 
I'm about three blocks from Lake Michigan. So it's it's really cold up there and really snowy. No. Really cold? No. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Cold well, isn't the word. I had a friend who freezing. I had a friend who who moved up there to, to teach um, to teach hey, contrabassoon. He is the he, veteran. When he moved yeah. in, when he moved into his apartment, they gave him some snow shoes, and he said, "What are these?" Mm -hmm. And it snowed one night, and he had to go out the attic window with his snowshoes. <laughs> <laughs> it's, the winter here can be a little brisk. <laughs> a little brisk. Now we can find out. Gim. Yes, sir. When did yes. you start with the mustache? You're when the did... you're the veteran here. I'm a old. I'm the. I'm. I'm. But I am employee number one. <laughs> they, that's it. Patient he zero. We started in uh, well, the club opened in '62. There you go. And uh, but the band started the year before. We actually did about three or four gigs. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, we okay, played. He's got, we he's, played for his, we played for his Harvard Business School class, and we played for his. Uh, uh, I forget who it was, but we played at the Charles River Boathouse. First time I'd ever been there. It was kind of cool. Got and then I joined. I think Jim, it was '64, because it was still the Red Garter. Yeah, it was a red card for quite a while, actually. Yeah. Yep. And when I joined, it was six, I think it was 64, because I was going to school during the day and yeah, playing club, at night. Yeah, the club opened in 63, I think, wasn't it? New York? Yeah. Club, yeah. They had just opened, so I'll say 63. Yeah, Boston opened in 62. That summer of 63, we opened Cape Cod. And then after Cape Cod, New York opened, because I went down for that, yep. too. So that, now you know how, isn't this exciting, guys? <laughs> isn't this exciting? That's now, how know. many of us are on oxygen? <laughs> <laughs> OK, wait, I'll get mine. <laughs> Mike Johnson is, too. Well, Jim, um, Joel wrote me and asked what I what I thought about having the um, reunion in October, and I yeah. said, "Well, I'll bring it up and see what everybody says." The question is, how many of us will be there? Well, I think that's yeah. kind of what Joel wanted to know. Snake says he doesn't know if he'll be alive. Then <laughs> Jeff doesn't know if he wants to come. No, Jeff wants to come. It's whether he can. How mobile are you? What? I'm 80. <laughs> I'm, I'm 80, and if I live till May, I'll be 81. Yeah, how does that look? I mean, can, uh, you, can, can you get on a plane right now and fly to, fly to uh, New York if you had to? If I had to, yes. OK, if, if you wanted to? That's, I have to say. <laughs> I don't know. The first time we had the first reunion, I couldn't come because I was in the hospital oh having a heart attack. And Joel said he'd send a car for me. You know, if I could fly to New <laughs> yeah, York. Right. <laughs> if I could fly to New York because he had a some sort of hack service. Oh, he, owned, he, he owned a limo service for a while. I forgot that. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. That's how old we are. Yeah. <laughs> Joel's been out of many more businesses than you and I can count. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah, the ridiculous thing is that we're still here talking about it. Yeah. I, the, uh, you know something? The oxygen isn't working. You know why? I didn't <laughs> turn it on. <laughs> Hello. No, it's OK. Yeah, right. I just like the way it looks. I think it's rather distinguished looking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you have a, a nitrous oxide uh, on that? Oh, no. I I spoke to my supplier before nitrous oxide. I'm just going to go straight marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, 
my my brother who died oh, many years ago lived on marijuana for 10 years past when they thought he was supposed to live. And I, you know, right now, I spend a lot of my time figuring out what med I'm going to take. And I got to tell you guys, if you have chest pain, any kind of chest pain, take nitro. It's fabulous. <laughs> you put it under your tongue, it tastes bitter as shit, but everything vanishes. Uh -huh. Hey, <clears throat> Chris, what's wrong? I'm taking any drug I can get my hand on. You means you're young again. <laughs> <laughs> you've re you've reverted. That's it. Oh, look. Here's another veteran. There's Herb. Hello, Herb. Yeah. Uh, I recommend uh, the drug of Italian Reds. Uh, very good. <laughs> no, my Red. favorite, my favorite, whenever I had a procedure, I took Versid. It's not only something to calm you down, but it's an amnesiac. So you don't remember. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, it's, an am it's an amnesiac. And the only word you have to remember is more. <laughs> more. I'm still awake. More. And he said, yeah. well, we don't want you. <clears throat> we don't want you under. Because with your heart condition, you could have an hour and go more more i love it does anything anyone see anything unusual in the phrase calm down coupled with all swang yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, damn, with all swang. Me, can i think about that a minute <laughs> oh and i was telling the guys herb i did introduce the strip tease in new york because it was about 65. It was right after I started working at the mustache four or five nights a week. And I got so pissed off with Ronnie Bizel playing that tune. <laughs> oh, it was just so bad that one night I just stood off and took my shirt off. <laughs> that was some picture. That was some picture. Thank God we don't have any. Photographs of that. Oh. No, we don't have any photographs of that. Oh God, I'm, it's just a tragic. My, my real true story with that temptation is uh, when I was first getting into your father's mustache, and I was broken in by George French, so I knew forty songs. Now, <laughs> oh, George! <laughs> I knew forty George. songs, and all of a sudden, I'm thrown into New York and Basel. <laughs> who, who Ronnie didn't trying, have a lot of who was who was trying to think of any songs he could play that would be a new song. So oh, but, we like oh. a fountain of song, and I was her forty songs top forty. <laughs> so he called Temptation. Of course, I didn't know it, so I screwed it up. And and he's very nice. He turned around. And he said, "Look, we usually do a lot, so make sure you know that song." Okay. Well, come in the next night. I haven't bothered to learn the song. And, uh, that's now that's me. Yeah. No, so, so I haven't bothered to learn. So I haven't learned the song, and uh, so I've, I get done screwing it up and slaughtering it all over the place. And after the song is over, Bizel puts his banjo on his knee, turns around and spins around to me and says, "What are you doing, fucking around with my living?" <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Ronnie was Ronnie was pretty serious. Yeah, he, he made me feel very bad, <laughs> but I did learn the song. <laughs> he also, I think he was the one. No, I want to think. No, I think it was Ronnie Bill who brought in King Chanticleer. Do any of you well, remember King Chanticleer? Sure. The only sure. song I know. It's the only Charlie song Borneman. That's Charlie right. Borneman, Jeez. trombonist. That song is the very hey, hey guy. King King Chanticleer was introduced to all of us by uh, Johnny Martin, the, the banjo player from California. And we all learned it from that. 
What Carl, a loser that Carl, was. Carl played it as well, now that I think about it. But just, just for kicks, I mean, it was not, not a song anybody else knew, really. King Chanticleer March. C, A minor, F, E flat, D flat. B, ugh, awful. Absolutely awful. I came in late. What's, what's with that song? What we're we talking about with that one? King Chanticleer March. At all the banjo rallies, that's the big song. Oh, my <laughs> God. If you go to banjo rallies, they all play that. I don't play it, but uh, I can't <laughs> play it. <laughs> I could never play it. I just could for the first two or three measures. Then I put my instrument down and make believe I broke a string. Yeah. <laughs> that was. <laughs> that, I got to tell you a story, play. one of the best music practical jokes I've ever heard. Any of you know a clarinet player named Joe Madiri? Very, oh, very well, very well. Play with him. Very fine jazz clarinet. Good friend. He has, he has a brother. Oh, the anyway. Brother. He, he's playing on a job, and uh, during the job, they had a guitar player in the band. And uh, during the break, they tuned the guitar down a half a step, one way oh. or another, I forget which. So he changed, just tuned it by a half a step, kept it quiet from everybody. At the beginning of the next set, Joe said, turns around and says, said, look, we've been doing these same songs year after year, the same key, the same songs, everything like that. We need some challenge. We need some kind of creativity. So, <laughs> so from now on, we'll, let's play every song up a half a step. <laughs> well, who was this? For the, guitarist, for the guitarist, that just slid him up, and he was playing back in the original key. He didn't know that all the other guys were playing in the same key they had played in years and years. So these guys are flying around in their solos, playing everything. He's thinking they're set playing in the key of B and in the key of C. I love that. <laughs> now, I love that. At the end of the job, they're driving home from the job, and the guitar player is not saying a word. <laughs> and uh, yeah. when I get out of the car and the guitar Tony <laughs> says Geez, I, I, I knew you guys were good but th that was incredible I've never seen that. <laughs> <laughs> they, they didn't let him know for a week yeah, <laughs> they wow. didn't tell him for a week <laughs> no it was I had one experience like that with Joel and it wasn't King Chanticleer it was one of those other weird ass songs but I turned to Joel and I had just started working there. I said, what key? And he said, two flats. Well, it wasn't. He was just ragging me. I forget what song it was, but it was my first complete wipeout. I started playing the song in two flats and I realized that Joel had pulled my leg. So I turned to him and said, how do you like it, Joel? How's this key for you? And I played the whole song out in B flat. Let everyone else catch up to me. That was <laughs> mine. <laughs> oh, no, we had some beauties there. Yeah, Joe Terra has a key story. When he was down in Miami playing at uh, Jackie Gleason's place, uh, they had a revolving bandstand. And they would play uh, Frivolous Sal, My Gal Sal, for the oh. bands. Uh, oh, yeah. And the one band was led by a brilliant trumpet player named Don Goldie, who was like Jack T. Gordon's. Oh. Oh, he's, he, he was wonderful. He was a wonderful player. Yeah, he was. yeah a fabulous musician. And uh, anyway, and he's the music director of the hotel. So they got, you know, the frivolous sound of the key of B flat. Well, you know, the mustache a bunch of young smart ass. I wasn't there. I'm told the story. Okay, there's a bunch of smart asses. So they said, well, look, let's come around. Let's do it in the key of C. So they come around playing it in the key of C. Well, Don Goldie, you know, they hear the door of the dressing room slam, and Don Goldie comes steaming around. And of all the people to go to, he goes to Joe Terra. And he says to Joe, what the hell key was that? And Joe Terra said, what's a key? <laughs> <laughs> and Don Goldie just throw up his hands and walked away. <laughs> That is perfect. You know what Jay Brackett, may he rest, what he did to me. I was just starting to play lead in New York. All I can remember is two B flats and a C. Georgia Camp, 
2b less than the c and bracket evidently could not or would not play it in c he couldn't get up to the top and he turns to me we had microphones then he turns to me he says old swang if you play that fucking song in c you're gonna be all alone and I laughed. I laughed. And I was all alone. We <laughs> played two B flats. I went up to see and I was all alone. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. And Brackett's sitting there laughing hysterically. Oh, yeah. I warned. You were warned. I was. <laughs> I didn't know Jay well enough then. Mm. Everybody remembers St. Patty's Day at the New York Club. Very well. Green beer and the whole thing. Oh, God, it was awful. Oh, <laughs> God, it was, it, 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 it was a... Uh, it was... Hey, Ira. Hey, Ira. Hey, guys, how are you? Okay. Yeah. Ira, you remember this? The St. Paddy's Day in the New York Club? Yeah. Oh, Pat God. Uh, I hated yeah. St. Paddy's Day. Well, Would this be anything time? from St. Paddy's Day? Oh, my God. I hated it. Yeah, that. Wow. Okay. You hated it? Must have been, it was wild in New York, in uh, New Orleans, probably. Mm -hmm. um, New Orleans wasn't this especially crazier than usual. For no, New York was a zoo, mm -hmm. an absolute zoo. I no, what was try, bad? We did try green beer, though. Green beer, was, yep. And yeah. we had a blarney on our front. Yep. Paint, paint what was green. bad was Joel without telling me, well, of course he wouldn't tell me, he fired Carl Lunsford. When did he do that? Yeah. I, when did he do 60, that? 65. Yeah, good, good. Yeah. Carl was pretty much uh, uh, a fixture in Boston. He I mean, was. He, he was, uh, I mean, he had, he had his own fan club, basically. I mean, people came just to yeah. see him. He was very effective on the stage, very effective. Very. Well, he had evidently, I found out he had a little brown cork fever. He was having a bad time. Is there everyone thing I am? What? Sorry? Right. I'm looking at a leader in the 2020 Gartner Magic Quadrant for Meeting Solutions. What? What? No idea. No idea. Let me go back. A, you must be in an alternate meeting. I am at an alternate meeting. Say, Ira, didn't say, at the Barney Stone we had in New York. Let me try it again. Try it yeah. Barney Stone, remember yeah. they, we had a Barney Stone? Right. And when it's, when it, somebody was a little Ira, or one of the guys pissed on it. And watched that was, a, I, I think that was Dexter. <laughs> yeah, they pissed on it and watched all the girls kiss it. Oh, oh. Just, just before Roger walked in, and then he yeah. kissed it. Oh. <laughs> Jeez. That's what I hear. Man, y'all are y'all. I can't imagine doing something like that. Oh, they they also, oh, also they came up and said peanut, peanut salty. See, and that's also the, just the peanut barrel. You guys, <laughs> most of you were straight. I just didn't give a shit. <laughs> I mean, as long as long as the people were laughing, I didn't care. But it was <clears> funny <throat> because I was working in a New York club, and I got called in early and Joel told me it was Thursday night he said tomorrow you're going up to Boston you're going to play lead <laughs> just like that I said hmm. Joel I only know half the songs and the melody notes I hit by mistake or maybe a quarter he said you're going up You'll entertain him. And by the way, the band is a little tight. The guys are a little tight. I want you to loosen them up a little. <laughs> Me. That's like giving a dog a piece of raw meat. <laughs> I went up there Friday. Oh, God, the train ride. I got up there. And the band was there. And they knew every song. In every set, you know, Carl had them really tight. Yeah. Really tight. And he was a good player. And I said, look, guys, first thing I want to tell you, there are no intros. 
no intros. We either vamp or I'm going to give you a count of four. Mm -hmm. It just started. I'll catch up with you. Don't worry about it. You're the only band leader. You're the only band leader who ever gave the count of four in a waltz. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did I do that? I, I can do that if it sounded right. If it sounded right. I went up there and these guys are looking at me, you know, like I needed to be hospitalized. They had no idea. <clears throat> I said, look, we all know the first song. Somebody stole my gal. Everyone knows that. So here we go, guys. One, two, three, bam. We, we were starting it all over the place. It was the worst thing I ever heard in my life. And I yelled, stop. Stop. And the band looks at me like I'm completely insane. I said, stop. Let's all get together and try it again. Now I'll vamp and see. I forget who was playing trombone. I said, you just come in when you're comfortable and we'll follow you. <laughs> and you know what that did to the band members? They were looking, please get, get, get an oxygen tank. Get something. <laughs> Call the police, because this guy's, and we got through the first set. We were laughing so hard. We just had a good time. And I, that was that was my attitude from that time on. If I was having a good time, and the band was having a good time, and the audience was having a good time, then who the hell cared? Nobody was really listening to the music. Ronnie Bill listened, and Ronnie Bizer listened. I don't know, Kim, I think you listened. You oh. played a lot of melody notes. <laughs> From time to time. <laughs> you, know, you know a song Ronnie Bizer used to call, that used to really work? He always did it in the first set. He did like a whole bunch of throwaway songs in the first set. But he did this one song and the crowd picked it up. It became like a hook song was going out of my head. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, that, that unusual that, that, that song would work, but that, that in those days, that song worked at your father's oh. lesson. Right. Oh, God. Come did you ever play that, Gim? Yeah, we played a lot of that. We played downtown, you know, the... Uh, oh, the, God. Downtown. Yeah, we, you know, we, you know, it, that was a, that was the era at that time. We had all, all those, uh, all those, all those tunes for that particular, uh, you know, time in the. Did you sing it with a little Petula Clark uh, sway there? Yeah. You know? Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we did the and the Fifth Dimension too. We did their song. What the hell was the name of that? Up up, up and away. away. Yeah, that one. That I remember up up and away. That was a, a big, I went, that, I that went down. Jimmy, down. Jimmy Webb's song. You know, Jimmy Webb was down my way uh, about uh, oh, right before COVID. He did a concert here, and uh, boy, all the great songs he wrote. Yes, he did. The, yes, he man, did. man, what what a great songwriter he was. You know, just just an aside, nothing to do with the mustache. Sorry. No, no, no. I remember whenever we had musicians. I mean, grown up musicians. A lot yeah. of them had a real hard time. Steve Kagan, who was a brilliant musician. Yes, he was. He, he used to go nuts. He hated it. Every once in a while, he'd turn around and play the piano. Yeah, he was a good piano player. And Dave Bargeron was not too happy with five foot two. Eyes are blue. What oh, God. He can do. Do you, you believe Joe, those Joe songs? Hans, remember Joe Hanschrau? There's another good player. Oh, yeah. No, he was terrific. <laughs> Joe Hanschrau played good. I, I, I was very close with uh, Bob Stewart. Remember him, black tuba player? Bob, Bob, yes. Bob and I were good friends. Bob and I uh, are we're in contact. Bob is still around. He's, he, we're in contact. He, yeah. was, he, he was. Uh, he was part of the uh, Howard Johnson uh, all tuba band. He and Barjorama, yes. he and right. Barjorama were both in it. Yeah. If you have it, they're on they're on uh, YouTube. It's it's well worth a listen if you're uh, if if you're particularly if you're curious what five tubas sound like. 
because <laughs> Howard arranged it, and because uh, Howard is brilliant. I mean, he, he wasn't, uh, he's not college educated, but he was very, very well trained in, in music, and he understood, mm -hmm. he understands music very well, and uh, he wrote, he wrote arrangements for this five tuba group, which is really quite stunning. Did they ever play heavy metal? I remember I a Hank that. Greaves comment about it. Hank Greaves went over and heard him play once and he came back to the club and I said, well, how was it? He said, well, too many tubas. Too okay. many? <laughs> too many tubas. That was Hank Greaves' review. <laughs> okay. well, Where did you work with Hank Greaves? A trombone uh, combo in New Orleans called Bonorama. So. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Right. God. Right, well, we got this is probably all the people we're going to get today. So some of you know, but Joel wrote me and asked about having a reunion in October. So now Ira and Barry plans, and stuff, what do you think? Hey, anyone I'm who bored. plans on being alive in October, raise your hand. Yeah. I'll be there. Okay. I'll be there. <laughs> if they're having one, I'll go. Um, and I'm just uh, maybe a lot of the people who are watching. Who aren't even participating? If they if if they have a a, um, a way they can respond would be good because don't the, the, a lot of people the, that the look pipeline is John McLernan. You know, you just send an email to John McLernan and the world hears about it. Right. Well, he'll listen to this. By the way, if you do pass away, John is the harbinger of death. John, there's no oh, delay more in passing one information. No, 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 no. That's passing. what I want to hear. Thanks, Herb. <laughs> that's what I want to hear. That's just what I want to hear. I'll Jeff, leave that. Pass away, you come back. Email John McLaren. It'll be all over. That's <laughs> over the internet. Well, what do you all think? Yeah, I mean, I think the regulars on this call would probably go to a reunion. Rose up on me. I'm sorry. Where, where are I you go. talking about having I, a I, Well, I'm assuming it's Yale because that's where you yeah. talked about having it the last time. But well, I didn't ask that question, so. I think it'll have to be in Connect, probably in New Haven, just because uh, Joel is not as mobile as he used to be. I mean, he gets around, but he's not uh, hes not running any races these days. Is he living in New Haven now? Yeah, he lives in New Haven. Okay. I mean, I, I only here. get around, I only get around in a wheelchair. What about you guys, the rest of y'all? Would y'all show up there? You know, I mean, I'll have, I got my last shot today, so I kind of feel pretty good. What, did everybody have hey, their shots? Ira, what about you? I would show up, I think. Uh, I, uh, my biggest up? issue is flying, but I think we'll be okay by then. Believe it or not, I have a gig on October 23rd, 24th weekend. An actual real gig. I'm getting the trombone out of the attic sometime in August. And <laughs> again. Do you that? But if well, it's not I... that weekend, I'm there. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, was... I don't know how many people we get because we only get about a dozen on these calls. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but if you go back through all the calls, we we might have had fifty people come on these calls. Well, on Wednesday yeah. when I send out the notice, I'm going to put it put a big note in the notice. You know, like what do you think about a a reunion in October? Email Joel or some. I don't know. Good idea. Good idea. But we'll see what they say. How many I people do you have on your list, Tom? About 40, 50? Yeah. Yeah. But a lot of them have never responded, so I don't know if they if it's a good list or not. See, I've never gotten any kickbacks from that. If you send that list out with that on it, and then depending on the response, then we get some bigger lists, the ones they use for Carnegie. Yeah, I have that list. Right. Yeah, we'll talk about that. But the thing is, the people that get it, yeah. hopefully you'll let other people know. Right. Yeah. So and, and John, continue from there. John McLernan has that list. And the way to... <laughs> It's somebody to say, here's the date of the or of, of the thing without saying any particulars, just say, here's the date, uh, how many people think they can make it. And of course, anybody who says, well, where's it going to be and everything, then you get a response. You know, you, you leave it incomplete so that it begs a response. Or, or how many people might be interested. That's, That's what I would say. Might yeah. be interested. Because they'll want details. They don't want to commit or anything, but if you put might be interested, they say, well, I might be interested. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I hey, yeah. I may be interested too. <laughs> Barry, did you lose some weight? 
You're the second person that said that to me in the last three hours. I don't think so. <laughs> but, uh, he's just he's just wearing bigger shirts. Yeah. <laughs> he put the slim filter on his camera. I lost about three pounds from my belly to my ass. If that's <laughs> no, no, no. Shifting. We want evidence now. You got to sit up and show Barry. us. Shifting doesn't count. <laughs> I know I'm looking good, huh? Yeah, you are, man. You look great. Yeah. And shinier by the day. I'm yeah. getting thinner oh, 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 and thinner oh, 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 as my arms get longer and longer. I've always had four go. chins. Oh no, I'm 60 pounds lighter than I was at Carnegie Hall. Okay. That, all, I, all I have one stipulation. This time, the waiters are going to be able to get on the stage and sing some. Absolutely. <laughs> well, we, did it at, we did it at Carnegie, yeah. but just from the That's floor. Not, Last time we were supposed to get on stage, I got the white pants and the white shirt. They told us to get all this stuff. And they said, well, there's not going to be enough room for y'all. said, OK. We sang who in the audience. Who told you that? Who told you that? There'll be enough room. room. Billy, there'll we did it from the floor. floor. You mean who told us? We were there, and they said, you can't get on stage. Well, who told you that? Who's that, that? Was because, that was probably because we were running out of time. And they, they actually cut the show short. Because yeah, uh, they got up there before we got into time problems. But yeah. we did their song. I never heard it mentioned that we'd go up on the stage because we did it from the floor. Yeah, you know, because uh, I bought the white pants. They said, get some white pants and uh, have you bring your white shirt and I'll have a vest or something for you. So I brought. Well, somebody screwed pants. up on that, Billy, for sure. Yeah. Like, Y'all should get well, up there. Billy, I'll tell you what, Roger and Fred were both really pissed. <laughs> they, they were about that, that. They didn't let us up there, you know, but. You know. <laughs> And I was okay with it. I mean, I got to, I, I always got to say I sang in Carnegie Hall anyway, because I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we did. Billy and I did. Where, where's Joel, uh, Tom, where's Joel thinking of having it? It's not going to be like the last one in Connecticut. I don't know. I, you know, he just sent a note and I just wrote back and said, I'll ask. And um, I didn't think about asking where he's going to have it. I'll talk to him this week and see what, to see what's on it. Right back. Yeah. I mean, I'm. The thing you got to remember <laughs> is that. The thing that you got to remember is New Haven is also the home of Yale University. So when you, in October you're going to start competing with football weekends and all that kind of stuff. That that and the fact that Yale, in fact, the whole, whole of New Haven has been a, a you know a, a breeding ground for COVID. So it, it remains to be seen how effective they are about getting rid of that. That's, that's why it'd be my hard to actually make plans now. My body couldn't support it. My body isn't strong enough to support COVID. I've gotten my two shots, but I- I finally, I finally got my first shot and it kicked the hell out of me. Really? Yeah. Oh, it's the whole day. Wow. Really? Yeah, see, I had both of them and no, no sore arm and that's it. Did you get the Moderna or the Pfizer or what? Yeah, the Moderna. I had Pfizer. Yeah, I got oh. Pfizer. I had both of them and uh, I actually had no effect, no uh, ill effects yeah. at all. That's me. My wife did, had some problems and her dad really? did. You know, I was tired the next day. That was about it. I laid in bed for 24 hours. Yeah. I mean, yeah after the second shot, after the first, I had nothing. Right. Yeah. But did you know in New Jersey you can qualify for a shot if you're a smoker? Yeah. Really? I didn't know that. I just found that out. If you smoke, yeah. you can no, get it. And you don't, all you have to do is say that you smoke. Right. <laughs> That's what people That's are going to do. No, they, they don't have that. In, they don't have that in Florida. Snake, we can't smoke. We have oxygen. I don't want to light up once. You just get to light up once. Hey, oh, by the God, way, that'd be funny. By the way, I got my uh, scan results, and I'm cancer free for a while. For again, no, you're terrific. Thank you, terrific. Go. Good to hear, there Snake. You go, Snake. Hey, any of you guys have children or grandchildren who are into gaming? Oh yeah. I'm sure you do. Well, anyway, I, you know, I used to be, a, uh, I used to fly and I used to have a plane and I'm interested in it. Anyway, so this Microsoft this past year comes up with this fabulous flight center. <clears throat> they redid it. Incredible. So I'm like completely enamored of it, you know, and everything. Oh, yeah. So I, I check out and my son sends me a computer from one of the, you know, game, gaming uh, companies that says, here, dad, put it on. Yeah, have fun. But uh, anyway, I, just yesterday, I put the damn thing on everything, and I'm addicted. It's incredible. I've got the headphones on. I've got the joystick yoke, and I'm flying. 
<laughs> and I that's, just, I have, hours I, had of, I had one of those 10 years ago with the foot pedals and everything. Yeah, that's right. I'm sure now it's a lot more sophisticated. That's oh, the it looks like time. the real thing. Like you're flying over the terrain and everything I, like that. And I used, used to fly amazing. too. I used to fly and it was really good. It was cool. Yeah. Herb, that's the first sign. That's I'll the first sign. Oh, no. No, I've had, I've had, I've had other signs. I've had, I've, I've, I have yeah. signs. <laughs> yeah. well, I, I, I've heard friends tell me about the, those VR goggles and uh, a couple of my friends actually work out with them. They say that really? they have these exercise programs. I don't know. Oh, I can't, no. I can't strapping into them, so. <laughs> oh, no. Exercise? Well, they, say, me? they say the games that you're playing with them, you're you're fighting things and swinging sabers and all kinds of other nuts? stuff. Moving around all over the room. You, know? <laughs> you gotta be nuts. If I were to exercise and eat healthy, it would expect extend my life three weeks. And those are the last three weeks. I don't want them. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I don't like exercising either. No, I don't like that yeah. shit. Yeah. yeah no, like, That's like what they told me. They told me in the hospital here, the last time I was in, I get this hospitalist who's about 16 years old. He says, I, you got to get out of the bed. I said, I can't. He said, what do you mean? I said, look, look, they don't work. And he says, oh, no, then I can't sign you out. I said, doctor, I'm, I called my wife. I called my physician, I'm leaving. And the guy said, no, you need rehab. Why? Why, what am I rehabbing for? I'm going to hospice. <laughs> the only thing I'm doing now is eating all of the food that I oughtn't to. Yeah. That's it. That's, a, that's like they, they swab the guy's arm before they give him the fatal injections for execution. Yeah, yeah. get your last one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what do you want? M and M's. Yo, Jeff, I, Jeff, I saw this. Uh, I saw this inscription that was kind of interesting uh, on a tombstone. It said, uh, "I knew this would happen if I hung around long enough." Right. <laughs> that's well, that's good. Like you hear? Rodney, Dangerfield, Rodney Dangerfield said, all these workout nuts drop dead in perfect health. Merv Griffin says, um, I won't be back after the break. <laughs> That's oh, it. What's that down in Key West, that, that uh, tombstone in Key West? Uh, sorry. Oh, I told you I was sick. <laughs> yeah, the t I told you I was sick. <laughs> or the, other, the other one says, it's even better. It says, I'm just resting my eyes. <laughs> we're all... We're all a little. No, no. Well, this Ira, is... since, since you brought up uh, Rodney Dangerfield, I got to say my favorite one. Uh, he was said he was having dinner with his wife, and his wife told him she said she says I wasn't hungry. And he says she said you have to eat all your food. There are people hungry in China, and he says blow me. There's a guy horny in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's my mother used to say that to me. Babe, eat your food. Because there right. are people starving in China. Right. Mom, name three and I'll eat it. Yeah. My mom said Africa. That's what we did. Yeah. That's what we did. Oh, yeah. Anyway, guys, I got to take off. Okay. I love seeing you. Mm -hmm. Hanging in. Jim, yeah. take care of yourself. You're the You're varsity. Right. You're the varsity. And you'll be here next week, Jeff. From your mouth to God's ear. Yeah. That's why, Jeff. So, Jeff, will you, if we get you a wheelchair, will you play on the stage? No, just wheel me down to the front. You don't have to put me up on the stage. Oh, yes, we do. <laughs> oh, yes, if I get there, you have my permission to put me wherever I look good. I just, this is the thing. If I'm lying in a wood box and people are coming by, I don't want them to say, oh, my God, he looks good. Doesn't he look good? I want them to look at me and say, how did he last so long? He looks like shit. <laughs> what are you still okay, doing here? Guys. I love you guys. Take All right. See you next week, Jeff. Bye, Jeff. Bye, Jeff. Bye, Jeff. Take care, Jeff. That's a piece of work. We have there. to work on getting him out of his shell. <laughs> <laughs> piece of work. Yeah, he needs that, Herb.
His nurse must have been beckoning him with some more medication. <laughs> Fine. Yeah, we should all be saying I'll have whatever he's having. Yeah. Yeah, Billy, last week we got to see her. He put her on, on the camera. Yeah. Oh, last week? Yeah, when you weren't here. Who's that? Okay. Well, I was having my anniversary. Yeah. 49th, right, Billy? 49th. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. It was, we don't do much. I mean, we go to the, we'll hang out to places we used to. Of course, you know, you can't travel or anything. So we go to the places we were when we were dating and all, you know. So. Well, isn't that nice? There's, what what there's, is everybody on their COVID shots? We all had one, right? I, I had two. two. I, I got two. the second one yesterday. I'm a month past my second. Yeah, I, I've got my second on Tuesday. You know, so. See, that's good news because people our age are getting them, so... We oh, might yeah. be able to do this thing in October. You never know. Oh, yeah. This thing is going to be knocked out. I mean, it won't be ever, you know, apparently it never gets completely knocked out. But it's right. going to revert to like a flu kind of thing. Let's, let's have it in Texas so we won't have to wear masks. Oh, <laughs> right, God. <laughs> let's have it in Texas. Just don't bring any electrical instruments. Yeah, they're competing with Mississippi for the stupidest yeah. state around yeah. next to Florida. Well, uh, I hope we have a reunion, period. Yeah. Right. yeah, the thing about this, and then just that. because the governor of Texas is stupid, people in Texas themselves don't have to be. No, stupid. like yeah, the mayor of Houston yeah. said after that, you know, we're you know he's got like six million people living there. He says, nah, forget that, you know. Yeah. Plus, the governor of Texas is trying to cover up the sixteen hundred dollar electric bills. Yeah. Right. Yeah, um, but uh, here in South Carolina, I mean, everything's basically been wide open. But uh, I mean, but. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere until that second shot, you know. So, uh, you know, so you you just you you make up your own rule, you know. You make up your own, right? No, I'm actually. I, I had both shots. I still won't eat inside the restaurant. I'll go outside. But so I won't. Do you think that's going to change in in a year or so, or you think it's going to be hang, going? In a year, we should be good. I'm hoping. I mean, I think it's going to, but there's a lot of things that are going to hang around for ten years, you know, like. I don't think conventions are going to be going on that much anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, the only convention they've had in the New Orleans Convention Center recently was the cannabis convention. <laughs> they had all they had all the paraphernalia and everything that people use. Of course, it's not even legal in Louisiana yet, but they came here to have their convention. I know. Uh, <laughs> here in Denver, uh, the restaurants and bars are pretty wide open. Really? As many people as you want can be in them. And no masks inside. Yeah. Wow. That's man. not a good idea. Well, I'm not going to be in there. I'll tell no. you, Bourbon Street is closed now. It's ghost town. Yeah. Yeah. Ghost town. Every, every, place, every place on Bourbon Street is closed? Everything still. Yeah. Everything. Wow. Yeah. The mayor has decided Lucy, she ain't Lucy, going to phase three. I yet. went down to Key West with no shots. Lucy and I went to Key West uh, in December, early December. And the reason we chose it to go, we just wanted to get someplace to get out, was we, we could have all the meals outdoors. That's yeah. that's true. Just like in Florida, every yeah, place you can eat outdoors. We, we, we drove down. We drove down, and uh, you know we had one hotel room. We didn't go inside anywhere. We, uh, we ate all our meals outside and walked around the whole island, had a ball. You know, it was nice. You know, that's. I like Key West. Good. Oh, Key West is wonderful. Yeah, I think people are just going to learn how to live with all this. That's right. That's yeah. absolutely right. It's, uh, Herb is right. It's not going to go away. It's, it's, yeah. it, it, it'll beat it back into submission, but it'll never go away. Right. When they say back to normal, it's not going to be like it was two years ago. No. And, and I think you're right about the economy and the traveling and the hotels room. And, 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 you know, it's not going to be the same ever again uh, because people have discovered that they can work from home. A lot of them have. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, cab drivers can't work from home and barbers can't work from home, but, the, you know, a lot of people can and, and they will to, to a greater extent than ever before. And so and business travel will be down because people have discovered, you know, they can all Zoom. They can Zoom. They don't. And Zoom is a whole lot cheaper than an airplane flight and yeah. a hotel. And, uh, you know, it, one, one of the things, too, about uh, college, most college courses, you don't have to drive to a campus, find parking, and walk into a room with 30 other people and hear someone talk. Zoom is fine. For yeah, college. for college. Yeah. yeah, for college. Well, In college, yeah. And some yeah, of those videos, you can, you, know, you can back them up and you can watch the stuff that you missed. And it's, it's not a bad way to do it. You're recording. No, well, but, but that diminishes 
that diminishes the resident college experience, which is a great deal of the education that you get when you're in college. So yeah, well, yeah, I agree with that, except it also well, diminishes some of the money because you know there's kids out there that owe two hundred thousand dollars for. Oh yeah. Well, yeah, uh, the chat room thing on the side. I mean, we have it here. If you want to, you can chat on the side, and uh, you can you can you know, make dates and things like that. You can pass notes in class without getting caught. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know what? It's the younger grades that it's hurt because they're losing all the social interaction. I agree. That's that is, what it is. Because I think important. there's going to be a lot of people that homeschool after this. Yeah, this oh, is yeah. social interaction. Which I'm very against homeschooling. I'm totally that's against. My opinion. My they kids learn so much social. from the teachers, not the, not, I couldn't have taught them to them. Yeah. And besides, there's nothing wrong with interaction like after class. You know, just carry on with Zoom. That's <laughs> yeah. beer. You know, I, I mean, the, the, I consider this social interaction. Yeah. Sure. It yeah. is, but it's different for the much younger kids. Yeah. Well, no, for they much want to play in the playground together, stuff like that. Then college. Right. Oh, college is fine. Yeah. The thing I don't understand is why they didn't let all the teachers get vaccinated first. They should have. They're doing it now. Yeah. <clears throat> well, it, dep it depends on the state. I mean, what, it, it, yeah, what it, they did in Florida, they said the teachers have to be uh, over 50. Everybody in Florida is over 50. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And they, then, then DeSantis changed it that any teacher or educator or, you know, who works in the building. Yeah. <clears throat> Connecticut is now uh, going to uh, vaccinate not only the teachers, but everybody that works in the school system. You know? Oh, yeah, that's, that's what I meant. I mean, yeah, anybody that's going to be there. The, the janitor, anybody that's the there. Yep. Because these little kids are going to run around and you're going to get their germs. Right. Right. They're going to be in the playground. They're going to walk through the halls and hit each other or whatever. Speaking of which, it was weird. They said that there was hardly any flu season this year because everybody that's was right. so careful with their masks and stuff. Yeah, I heard that. The crazy thing is when people talk about what are your COVID policies and what are you doing, the stupidest answer to that is, well, it all depends on your political views. Oh, it yeah. doesn't. This thing in the world. You know, all I, I know is I don't have to hug anyone. It does. <laughs> <clears throat> I like that. Yeah. You know, like a hug in time? Well, you know, I don't mind hugging some people, but... You know, we had some friends come over and they're in the backyard and we're all social distancing. And when it came time to leave, I didn't have to get up and hug and all that stuff. I yeah. just, hi, <laughs> see you later. Get so long. Out of here. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that's true. That's true. You know, one of those, yeah, I can identify the, with that. I'm not a natural hugger, you know. No. Everybody's one frozen, the, sorry. The, one, of the saddest, one of the saddest things Ooh. about this whole COVID nonsense you keep straight. is that we could we could make it we could all go away we, we could kill this thing uh, and just end the entire pandemic right. if if everybody in the country stayed home for two weeks right yeah yeah, yeah. i mean i totally agree with that except yeah, that was, that was when i was working at the mustache if you'd have told me that i'd have it's just you, you're crazy right right but gim's solution was through last february Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I totally agree. But it's just when I'm 65, 60, 69, if I was <laughs> 20 again, and they said, you can't go to the mustache, you can't make any money, you can't work, you can't be yeah, any right. girls. Screw you. Yeah. For two weeks. Yeah. No, I remember thinking about, you know, I, did a, I didn't do a lot of things because it was a year. You know, like, oh, I got to go to this school, but no, it's a year. A year seemed like such a long time. Now it's nothing. Yeah. Mark, this month is a year. Yeah. But I said to my wife, you know, what if, if I would have told you last, a year ago, that we were going to be locked up for a year, what would you have done? You would have called <laughs> your lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> I remember the, the first job I did have because of it was, was March the 13th. Um, yeah. March, March just before St. Patrick's Day. Patrick's Day. Cut down and I had like all of a sudden I was supposed to be going to shoot a, a play and they said and I called and I said are you on and they said yeah we're, we're on but halfway across the causeway bridge I got a call said no the mayor Kenner says everybody's out shut up so I went home you know <laughs> her, her, you can't turn around halfway right? across well yeah you can they get a little turn around Dave's hunt. remember him Herb what's that 
Did you know Dave Hunt? Yes. Yeah, he lost his bar, which was a pretty big bar restaurant just before St. Patrick's Day. He lost it that weekend. Wow. Uh, couldn't open. Hmm. And he, can't sell, he couldn't sell it, so he had to retire without selling it. I think a lot of businesses after this year are going to go down. Sure. Yeah. yeah. How long can they hold on? A lot of them already have. Yeah. yeah. They're talking about some chains that are going to go under, too. There is a bright thing. There, there is a bright thing to look at, and that is I haven't heard a live banjo in a year. <laughs> it's always a bright side, right? There's always a bright side. <laughs> and, the, and the horse you came in on. <laughs> that is pretty good. I have a trumpet player friend of mine, in fact, a very fine uh, jazz musician, uh, George Rabbi. You might know the name. Play with oh. anyway, anyway, and George does a terrific imitation of uh, tuning up to a banjo. Where it goes, uh, ta, blink, 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 ta, <laughs> blink, ta. <laughs> Barry, do you have any gigs coming up? I got one in October. That's Herb, yours is in October, right? Yeah, I got October 23rd. In, um, in Daytona. And if my lip stays in shape, then I think Bob Price will probably be asking me to be a sideman uh, down at the Suncoast Jazz Festival again. We've usually make an annual thing that this year was out, but uh, you know, uh, he usually, for some reason, wants me playing trombone next to his uh, right ear. Now, Barry, you said Danny has some gigs, right? He's got a few, and I, I was with Danny this morning. He came over to see my dad. You know, my dad's right. been ill. Mm -hmm. and Danny told me this morning that yesterday he got two calls for two gigs. I mean, oh, you know, how, who gets that these days? Two gigs in one day. <laughs> he plays the piano, right? Or calls. Say what? He plays the piano. That must help him. I, I think these are two for gigs. Really? Didn't Joan Dragon last time I was on say that they were going to do their little jazz festival uh, this year? Yeah, that's what I heard talking about. The yeah, it looks, okay, looks, that's looks, looks yeah. promising. Uh, yeah, well, she has some great bands down there. She's so a really talented, uh, talented musician. It's, 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 that might be the best place to go to have a reunion. Right well, we had one there already. Uh, not a reunion, but all of us went down there. I heard. Yeah. <laughs> it is a Sun Coast. Yeah. That's yeah, the same. I, yeah, I, mean, I was in 2016, there, right? 2016, right? That's what? Wasn't Chris, that in 2016? Chris, yeah, somewhere yeah. around there. Chris, you were there, right? Yep, so I did. Jim, I went. Jim, did you make that one in Sun Coast? Couldn't make it. I forget why, but I didn't. Wasn't that, was that Punta Gorda? No, or was that no, a different no. one? That was a different, different one than Punta Gorda. No, Punta, no, Punta, 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 Punta Gorda was in six, 2016. Well, then this one, we talk about the Sun Coast, might was it before that? It might have been okay. 15 or 14. Mm -hmm. Herb, you would air at the Sun Coast. Like, when yeah, we yeah I was there. at the Sun Coast, and we had a good gang for that. We had like about 50 or something like that. We had a good gang of musicians, mustache musicians, and a lot of us went over there to, what's his name, the trombone player? Um, DeFeo. Oh, DeFeo. You know, DeFeo's place. You would air, Chris? Yep. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Snake. Remember that? So we were in the guest house. The guest house was a freaking yes. mansion in itself. I told Dottie, I said, you, my wife, I said, look around. We'll never be in stuff like this again, ever. <laughs> well, that was in one of the keys, right, Barry? He has one of the keys? Uh, Sarasota. 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 Oh, oh, Sarasota? I thought yeah. it was the keys. With his, private nice. beach, his private beach on the Gulf. And we were in the guest house. Across the, was the pool and a tennis course. Then he had his house. Yeah. You know? <laughs> the guest house was a shack compared to his house. Sarasota's nice. They had that white sand beach. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. But is that where he lives full time? No, but he lives there. He lives there more of the year than he used to. He's still up in Connecticut. Oh, he's in Connecticut. Okay. Okay. His kids, his, his kids live up there, so he has to spend his time. A lot of time he did well for himself. <laughs> for for uh, Billy and Tom, the guy we're talking about was 
is a trombone player. He loves playing the trombone with the mustache. Yep. But he's got to spend his time on these big time jobs as a CEO of big companies. <laughs> I think Remington or something like that. I heard it was uh, Procter, Procter and Gamble. Gamble. Procter and Gamble. Yeah. He CEO wasn't CEO of Procter and Gamble, but no, he, he wasn't. Play. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. He wasn't the CEO of Procter and Gamble. He did. He was there for a number of years. Oh, that's okay, where, that's where he got his training. And then he was. Then he was CEO of Remington. And then Remington. He was, that's what I know. Then he was CEO of uh, what the hell was the other company? Uh, and I, all I, he I, wants I, to do is play to a to Tootsie. I mean, then, then he then he, <laughs> then he then he then he started his own company, and uh, he ran that for a couple of years, and then uh, he retired from there. And he and his brother own, are are in venture capital now. Well, Gim, oh, that's what they're doing now. Gim, if you would have seen his house. Or his estate, you know, he was successful. <laughs> oh, I know, I know, I know he's successful because I've seen his house in Westport. <laughs> yeah, no. flat out nice guy. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. Very loud player. Very loud. That's what I remember about him. But he was nice. He's he's not for he's not forgotten his friends either. That's nice. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you too. Everyone talked about Neil just being loud and and everything, and he was that. But I think he ever got enough credit for being a good musician he was a very well, good he was a good musician or is still is he was yeah. at, at carnegie he did a nice job i mean i looked at the yeah. tape from carnegie a few weeks ago he's terrific yeah yeah and um, and um, a good ear had an excellent ear yeah. oh yeah he, he, he has he has I never think he got credit for that because he was so strong in other areas he has mm. range too, which is uh, interesting. He's the only trombone player I've ever I've ever known who can actually play "Getting Sentimental Over You" in the key of D, which Dors which is one the key of the Dorsey did it in. Right. He, everybody else does it in B flat, so that's where I learned it. <laughs> he plays it in D. Well, the amazing thing is doing it in the key of D after an evening at the Mustache. You betcha. I think I think I think most trombone players can do it in D. But we're going to do it relatively fresh. We're not going to do it in the third set at the must. <laughs> <laughs> but Neil could. <laughs> yeah. Ne uh, Tom, does Neil get this uh, email? Is he on there? Um, well, didn't did you send me his correct address or something? No, not Neil. Somebody else's. I forgot who. Um, there you go, there you go. I have to look. I have to find it. Okay, Snake. Nice. Take care, Snake. Uh, take care, Snake. I gotta go, also, guys. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah see you all next week. See yeah, you next time. Thank you, man. Yeah, man. If if somebody has Neil's email, send it to me, and I'll send I'll look for it on my master list. Okay, okay. I got it. Yeah, I'll send it to you. you also, go through your master list and see if anybody you think should be, you know, we should contact about the Zoom. I'll, I'll take a, I'll take a look at your address C list and see if there's any corrections I can make. Okay. Yeah. All right. See you guys next week. Okay, guys. Next week. Okay. Bye, Bye guys. Bye, Billy. Bye, Bear. Bye, Bye. 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 Bye.